Hey guys, this is Mr. Lee with another video lesson. This video lesson is found in section 1.6 of your textbook, and today we're going to be describing angle pairs. Okay, so your learning objectives for this section are to identify complementary angles and supplementary angles. Those two I think that you probably can already identify. Uh, but the two really important new things that we're going to learn in this lesson are linear pairs and vertical angles. These are critically important that you're able to identify those because we're going to be using linear pairs and vertical angles throughout the entire course. Okay, so let's do a little warm up. Okay, the five pointed star has a regular pentagon at its center. So right here in the center, this is a regular pentagon. Recall that a regular pentagon means that all of the interior angles are congruent and all its sides are congruent. Now, what do you notice about the following angle pairs? X degrees and Y degrees, this angle and this angle. What do you notice? Well, do you think they're going to be congruent? No, this angle looks like it's acute and this angle looks obtuse. Okay, so they're not congruent. Let's move on. What about Y degrees and Z degrees? So what about this angle and this angle? Do those look congruent? No, again, this is acute and this is obtuse. What about X degrees and Z degrees? What about these two angles? Those are both acute and they look like they might be congruent. We're suspicious that those might be congruent. Okay, so these angles that are across from each other look like they might be congruent. What about Y degrees and 108 degrees? Those also both look like they could be congruent. Okay, so there's a relationship that you're identifying here. And then what about the two angles, X degrees and Y degrees? Well, these are right next to each other. They're not congruent, but they're right next to each other. Y and Z right next to each other. Z and 108 right next to each other. Okay, so let's continue with our warm up. Find the values of the indicated variables x, y, and z. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, x is right here, and notice that it's right next to this 108 degree angle. Okay, so x is this acute angle, 108 is this obtuse angle. Notice that this is a straight line, or what we learned. The terminology is that's a straight angle. We know that straight angles always have a measure of 180 degrees. So if this entire angle is 180 degrees and this part of it is 108 degrees, 108 degrees, remember that the angle addition postulate helps us figure out what X equals. So what do you think X equals? X simply equals 180 minus 108, which is 72. Okay, so this would be 72 degrees. Well, likewise, if you look at X and Y, okay, if we know that that's 72 degrees, if we look at 72 and Y, those are also on this straight angle, okay, which is also 180 degrees. So these two are also going to add up to 180 degrees. And likewise, okay, these two also add up to 180 degrees. So now look at this pattern. Okay, the angles that are across from each other in the previous warm up, we thought, hmm, those could be congruent and they indeed are congruent. These two are across from each other, they're congruent. What about the angles that are right next to each other on the same line? Well, they add up to 180. And that leads us into today's lesson. All right. So first we have to do a little review of complementary and supplementary angles. Now think about what those mean. I think that you remember that some of those angles, okay, one of those angle pair relationships adds up to 90 degrees and one of those angle pair relationships adds up to 180 degrees. So let's find out which one is which. So your complementary angles, okay, you see this little right angle mark? These are complementary angles, okay? Angle one and two are complementary, and then angle A and angle B are also complementary, okay? So what do you think complementary angles um, measures add up to? 90 degrees, that's correct. And then with supplementary angles, they add up to 180 degrees. 
So two angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees are complementary. Two angles whose measures add up to 180 degrees are supplementary. Notice that with complementary angles, the angles can be sort of right next to each other, kind of sticking to each other, or they can be separate from one another. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, um, those are both complementary angles. The other thing to note, and same thing with supplementary angles, they can be sort of sticking to each other or separated from each other. It doesn't matter. Another thing that you have to notice is that two angles whose measures add up to 180, two angles whose measure. So if we have three angles and their measures add up to 180, those are not considered supplementary. Okay, remember these are angle pair relationships, meaning two angles. Okay, very important to remember. Okay, and let's talk about this word adjacent. Adjacent angles share a common vertex inside, but no common interior points. So those angles that I said that were like sticking onto each other, those are adjacent angles, okay? So here we have this line, okay? And then we have two angles, angle number five and angle six. Angle five and angle six are adjacent angles. They share one common side, and one common vertex and a common vertex. So they have the same vertex and they share one common side. Okay, but they don't have any of their interior points in common. They don't overlap in that regard. Okay. Adjacent means right next to, right? So if someone is standing adjacent to you, they are standing right next to you. Okay, and in geometry, when we say adjacent, we mean right next to, as in sharing a common side. Okay, what about angle seven and eight? Are those two angles adjacent? No, those are non-adjacent. Okay, they do not share a common side. They're not touching each other, okay? All right, so here's an example. So in this diagram, we have two angles, angle one and angle two. We have this little right angle symbol. So what does that tell us? That tells us that angle one and angle two are complementary. Okay, their measures add up to 90 degrees. So can we find the measure of angle two? Yeah, this is gonna be easy. We know that complementary angles have measures that add up to 90. So we know that 62 degrees plus the measure of angle two, okay, is equal to 90 degrees. Another way to express that is that the measure of angle two is equal to 90 degrees minus the measure of angle one. Be careful with your notation. Make sure you have this M measure of angle two. Okay, if you don't have that M, it's an incorrect statement because when you have the M, it makes this a number. In equations, work with numbers or values, I should say. Okay, so we know that the measure of angle two, now we're just gonna substitute, instead of measure of angle one, we're given 62 degrees, so we just substitute that in. And solving, we find that the measure of angle two equals 20 degrees. Now in algebra class, your teachers probably got you into a very good habit. They get you into habit of doing what? Check your answer, right? Does 28 plus 62 equal 90? Yes, it does. Okay, next example. Can you name the following? Name all the complementary angles, the supplementary angles, and the adjacent angles. Okay, complementary, add up to, that's correct, 90 degrees. So what are the two complementary angles? Well, we have 53 and we have 37. Those add up to 90 degrees. So how do you name this angle? Okay, we're not just gonna use one letter because now we have a complex diagram and with this, Okay, vertex A, it's the vertex of two different angles. So we're gonna use all three letters. Okay, so we're gonna call this angle RST. Okay, and then this angle down here, we can call this angle CAB. And it'd be fine if you called this angle BAC, does not matter. Okay, those are complementary. Supplementary angles add up to 180. So that is 53 degrees and 127 degrees. See if you can name those. Yep. Angle CAD, CAD, and angle RST. Good. And then finally, the adjacent angles. The adjacent angles are the ones that are kind of stuck to each other, right next to each other. Okay, they share a common vertex and a common side. Angle CAB and angle CAD, these are your adjacent angles. Okay, now let's learn something new, something very, very important. Linear pairs and vertical angles, this will 
can, you'll, you'll have to recognize these throughout the entire year, the entire course. Okay, so let's start with linear pairs. So linear pairs are two adjacent angles. So the first thing is they have to be adjacent to be linear. Okay, they have to have a common side. They have to be adjacent. If they're not touching one another, they're not linear pairs. Okay, two adjacent angles are a linear pair when their non-common sides, so the non-common side and the non-common side, are opposite rays. Remember we defined opposite rays a few lessons ago. Opposite rays are basically two rays that share a common endpoint and go in exactly opposite directions such that they form a straight angle or a straight line, okay? So the angles in a linear pair are also supplementary, okay? So angle one and angle two are a linear pair, okay? Why? Because they're non -com the first of all, they're adjacent, but their non-common sides form a straight line, okay? They're opposite rays, okay? Critically important to remember, what do their measures add up to, okay? Angle one and angle two, what does the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two add up to? That's right, 180 degrees. Linear pairs, their measures always add up to 180 degrees, okay? By definition, they are supplementary angles, okay? So next, vertical angles. Two angles are vertical angles when their sides form two pairs of opposite rays, okay? What the heck does that mean, okay? So remember, these are angle pair relationships. So we're looking for one pair, okay, of vertical angles. So one pair would be like angle three and angle six are vertical angles. So in this diagram, the way that you, it looks like a cross or an X, okay, the way that you identify vertical angles are they are the ones that are sort of across from each other in this kind of an X-shaped diagram. Okay, so angle three and angle six. Okay, also, do you see another pair of um, vertical angles? Yes, angle four and angle five are also vertical. Okay, now be very, very careful. They're only vertical angles when their sides form opposite rays. Okay, in other words, straight line, straight line. Okay, their sides, both pairs of their sides have to be opposite rays. Okay. Vertical angles are always congruent. Okay, no matter where you find the vertical angles, they're always congruent. Look at angle three and angle six. Okay, those are both, are they obtuse or acute or right? Those both look like acute angles. So those two acute angles are congruent. What about angle four and angle five? Okay, those two are both obtuse angles. Okay, so those are also vertical angles and therefore congruent. Okay, so can you identify all of the following? Okay, be careful with this one. Okay, so linear pairs are two angles that, remember, linear means pertaining to a line. Okay, so pair means two angles. Pair means two. So can we find two angles that are on the same line? That's what linear pairs are, a pair of angles on the same line. Okay, so where do we see that? Okay, so you see this line right here, okay, and see angle one and angle four, those are two angles that share, that are basically on the same line. Okay, so those are a linear pair. Okay. Also, angle four and angle five are a linear pair. They're on this line right here. So we have angle one and angle four, and angle four and angle five. Okay, question. Here's a straight line, and there's angle one, angle two, and angle three, and those are on this straight line. Are those a linear pair? Angle one, angle two, and angle three? No, because it's not a pair. Three angles is not a pair, okay? So even though angle one, angle two, and angle three Okay, are all on this line, those are not a linear pair, okay? All right, vertical angles. Where do you see vertical angles, okay? Angle one and angle five are your vertical angles, okay? Question, what about angle four and angle two? Okay, those look like they form an X and they're across from each other. Those are not vertical angles, why? Because this side of four and this side of two, those do form opposite rays. 
But if you look at this side of two, there is not an opposite ray going in this direction. Okay, so four and two are not vertical angles. Also, remember that, and I just noticed that I didn't put a T there, sorry, not vertical angles, but vertical angles, that should have a T there. Um, also remember that all vertical angles are always congruent, okay? And therefore you can see that four is much larger than two. They are not congruent, all right? All right, two, two angles, example four, two angles form a linear pair. Okay, so now you have to go ahead and in your notes, draw that picture. Okay, see if you actually learned what a linear pair is. Okay, so two angles form a linear pair. What does linear pair mean? A pair means two angles, linear means pertaining to a line. So two angles on a line. So what would be an easy way to draw this? Just draw a straight line. Okay, then draw a ray coming out of that line. Okay, a ray whose endpoint is on the line. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, and I just ruined the last part. Okay, the measure of one angle is five times the measure of the other angle. Okay, so we don't know what either angle measures, but one of them we don't know. Let's just call it x, and the other one is five times greater than x, so it's going to be 5x. Okay, so this is what your diagram is going to look like. Okay, here's your linear pair. One of your angles is x, the other angle is 5x, okay? And obviously the x would be smaller than 5x, so that's why we put the x on this side. Find the measure of each angle. How are we going to do this? Okay, find the measure of each angle. Okay, first of all, what the heck does that mean, measure of an angle? Well, the measure of an angle tells you how big that angle is, and the unit of measurement is degrees, okay? so. Our answer to this question, find the measure of each angle, is going to be, well, this is some degrees and this is some number of degrees, okay? So how is this diagram going to help us solve that? Well, what do we know about linear pairs? They're on a line, right? They're on a line or a straight angle. So together, these two angles would add up to how much? 180 degrees. So think about the equation that we could write and solve. So yeah, 5x plus x equals 180, okay? Now, notice I dropped the degrees. You could have written 5x degrees plus x degrees equals 180 degrees, okay? But it's the same thing, calculation-wise, it's the same thing if I drop all of those um, degrees on both sides of the equation. So what do we do? Just combine like terms, 6x equals 180, divide both sides of the equation by six, so x equals 30. All right, x equals 30, we're done, right? No, we're not done. Okay, now what do we do? Did we answer the question? Find the measure of each angle. So we take that x and we simply substitute it back into this diagram. Well, this one is done. That's 30 degrees. And then we can just plug x in there. 5 times 30 is 150. Check. Does 30 degrees plus 150 degrees equal 180 degrees? Yes, it does. Okay. So go back and answer the question. The measures of the angles are 30 degrees and 50 degrees. Guys, that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now go and enjoy your practice problems. Thanks.